cataracts usually and astigmatism. What you should know about the astigmatism correction with the intraocular lenses and what type of intraocular lenses is better to select in cases of astigmatism and what visual outcomes you might expect after the cataract surgery with or without toric intraocular lenses. Hi there, my name is Oleksi and you at IOL Advisor IO Surgery Explained channel. Eye corneal astigmatism is a most often and the most prevalent condition affecting millions of eyes worldwide. To understand the topic better, let's dig deeper shortly into the eye anatomy. Our eye is a combination of two lenses. The first lens is cornea, the second lens is natural lens, which is later replaced by intraocular lens in case of cataract or in case of refractive lens exchange. And the purpose of these two lenses is to focus our incoming light rays sharply on the retina. And as you might expect, uh, the, all lenses should be perfectly shaped for uh, better visual outcomes. And if you are talking about crystal lens, about natural lens or about intraocular lens, it's uh, normally it's a well-shaped lens, but it's not the case with the cornea. In ma many cases, in vast majority of cases, may, people has an uneven cornea. So in uh, instead of the perfectly shaped spherical uh, corneal shape, like a soccer ball, our cornea might have an uneven surface and different so-called meridians, so it might look like a kind of a rugby ball. It means that incoming light rays are not able to focus at sharply at one focal point because the cornea is uneven. And that's why we have multiple focal points. Sometimes in case of severe astigmatism, patient might have a visual lines disorders like vertical lines are not always vertical, etc. What is important here to know for you? We have basically two types of astigmatism. Honestly, more, but generally, to have understanding, we have two types. One is regular astigmatism, and second one is irregular astigmatism. And astigmatism, which I recently mentioned, which is kind of rugby ball, is regular astigmatism, which can be corrected by using a special type of intraocular lenses, special eyewalls. And the second one, which is irregular astigmatism, is not able to be corrected. The problem is uh, that uh, irregular astigmatism is kind of absolutely different uneven corneal surface which we can't, uh, let's say, predict or, okay, we can diagnose it, we can see it, but we are not able to select or to manufacture the lens which will perfectly compensate for that. And in this video I'm talking about the irregular astigmatism which might be corrected by toric intraocular lenses. Well, how corneal astigmatism might be corrected? So we, if we have an even surface of the cornea, we should adjust the optical system of the cornea by placing special lens which will compensate that regular uneven surface. And honestly, we have uh, three options to do it. And the one and the most reliable option is to put a toric lens. What does it mean toric lens? The toric intraocular lens is a special lens like any other lens. And in my recent videos, I explained that Toric lenses are not the special type of lenses. It's a big mistake saying that we have, let's say, monofocal toric lenses and then, let's say, full range of vision lenses. The toricity of the lens is just an option which can be added and is added to any of four major eyewall types available in the market. And in, of course, in every eyewall type, we have a different eyewall models. Let me offer you a good option where to know all the details about the intraocular lenses. I recently launched my proprietary trained artificial intelligence assistant, which will guide you through all the lenses uh, from the, let's say, basic eye wall type selection based on your answers. Or you can ask him or her, whatever you prefer. So you can ask whatever questions you want to know about the different eye wells. If you will have any doubts, any questions, model will provide you with my email and uh, my personal consultation page. Toric lens is the most predictable and the most reliable correction of method of astigmatism in that type of patients. But we have to know um, that there are some, let's say, exceptions or some specific. The first one that uh, astigmatism measured in meridians, in the, which angle it is, let's say, turned in your cornea and then in your lens. And the second is most and more important point is the amount of astigmatism measured in optical diopters. And uh, if we're talking about astigmatism less than one diopter, in majority of cases, your surgeon is able to correct it by special relaxing corneal incision or relaxing limbal incision. So it's specific techni uh, technique of the surgery to play the incision inside of your, uh, to get inside of your eye to correct 
let's say, this uneven surface of the cornea. But if astigmatism is higher than two diopters or higher than one diopter, sorry, the most uh, reliable way is to install the toric lens. And what you should know about the toric lenses? The toric lens shall be stable inside of your eye in terms of keeping the position, in terms of rotation versus the corneal power to keep the optimal results of vision correction with that lens. And the problem here is that the different lens, the lenses perform a bit differently. Some lenses rotate uh, more, some lenses rota rotate less. And honestly, there is no ideal lens which can be placed inside of the eye and will stay ideally for sure 100% of cases. Even the best lenses, uh, the best in class lenses have such a uh, certain uh, amount of rotation. And honestly, rotation to a few, de uh, few degrees doesn't affect too much. Rotation higher than 30 degrees totally removes the effect of astigmatism correction and even can worsen the vision after the surgery. It is important for you to keep in mind if um, your vision after the cataract surgery has been restored to the good condition and then maybe one day, one week or whatever, your vision became blurry again. Go to your doctor and discuss what happened because in that cases, if it is an unlikely event of IL rotation. Surgeon can simply reposition the lens, rotate it back. And it's absolutely easy procedure. So, well, honestly, there is no surgical procedure which is easy, but comparing to IOL exchange or cataract surgery, this is not kind of complicated procedure. Surgeon can rotate the lens, and the earlier the lens is rotated, the easier the procedure is. So please don't hesitate to contact your doctor if you have any uh, problems with the vision after the surgery and to discuss what is the reason and what is possible to do in these cases. So rotational stability is one of the important factors. Honestly, sometimes we have so high amount of astigmatism we, uh, which, is not be, which is not able to be corrected by intracord lenses because lenses are manufactured in, let's say, certain range of diopters. But for vast majority of patients, we do have toric lenses which are able to correct uh, corneal astigmatism and to put the vision to the good conditions to give you sharp vision at any distances. Of course, depending on your lens type. By the way, in my next video, I will explain the range of vision versus toric lenses because it's one misconception I've discovered on the internet and I want to explain you more. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, do it right now, switch on the notification to, let's say, to be able to see my next video on that topic. Well, let's move on. Uh, I've talked about uh, toric lenses too much and what happened and what you can do if for whatever reason you are not able to implant the toric lens. There are two other options. The second one is a surgical correction of your corneal astigmatism by laser refractive surgery. It is a good option, which is used sometimes to correct astigmatism if it was not corrected for whatever reason by the intracord lens. But honestly, my personal opinion is that uh, it's better to use toric lens versus monofocal plus uh, laser vision correction if it is possible, of course, if it's medically possible to put a reliable toric lens for you, because of two reasons. Any surgery is a certain risk. And second one is that even any laser refractive surgery is not the, let's say, perfect procedure, because it might induce surgical corneal aberration, might induce hollows and glare in some cases. So uh, the best surgical, uh, let's say, approach is to avoid any surgery if, if it is possible. But it's possible option and sometimes it's a better option than toric lenses if we, uh, the eyeball is too large or if we don't have a let's say dedicated lens to correct the full amount of astigmatism. So it depends and your doctor will explain you all the options and help you to, to help you to understand how does it work. Well, and the third option which I mentioned is a glasses or contact lenses. Exactly. As uh, people without artificial lens may use toric lenses uh, for glasses or contacts, it will. it is an optical solution which compensates your astigmatism and brings you a good visual outcomes for far intermediate or whatever range based on your, let's say, type of lens you select. And the last but not least, what I would like to mention about the corneal astigmatism and intracord lenses is the type of astigmatism and uh, astigmatism calculation and uh, lens placement 
versus the cornea because there are two important factors you should know. The problem is that the cornea is not stable over the entire life of the patient. And as I mentioned, we have irregular astigmatism and irregular. And again, I'm talking about regular astigmatism, which is kind of a uh, rugby ball, which is rotated to different angles. And uh, we have two points to consider. First of all, majority of younger patients has so-called with the rule astigmatism, or, or generally we have three types of astigmatism of irregular astigmatism. It's so-called with the rule astigmatism, which makes we have a steep vertical meridian. The second one is against the rule, which we have a horizontal meridian. And something in between, we have oblique astigmatism, which is um, astigmatism at different angles. So, uh, majority of younger patients have the uh, with the rule astigmatism, majority of elderly patients have the against the rule astigmatism. So, it changes. So, it's, so, it changes with the time. And what is more important, the angle of your astigmatism and even amount of your astigmatism might be changed due to the use of contact lenses and due to the tear film stability and quality of your tear film, which is uh, the essential to keep the cornea in a stable shape. It means that if you are a regular contact lens user, if you are wearing the contact lens regularly, your doctor should warn you to remove your contact lenses at least one or better two weeks two weeks before the measurement of your corneal surface and lens calculation. Because in this case, you will have, a, let's say, true and realistic status of your cornea and uh, your intraocular lens, your toric intraocular lens will be calculated properly. And the dry eye syndrome is uh, an ability for your, uh, of your embolium glands, of your eye structures to produce high quality tear film in enough quantity and it means that if cornea is relatively dry you might know this or you might be not aware of this because it's at subclinical phase it also might affect the astigmatism calculation and that's why when you put the intracore lens your astigmatism may be changing a little bit and your lens might rotate or might be stable but your astigmatism and cornea might change so it's important if you have astigmatism to discuss with your doctor your ocular health and uh, how do you use your contact lenses. If your doctor said to you, do not use your contact lenses for one week or two weeks or three weeks, whatever, please follow that rule. Don't cheat with the doctor because at the end of the day, will you cheat yourself because your astigmatism might be ass assessed wrongly. That's why your intraocular lens might be placed in the wrong position and your visual outcomes will be far away from the perfect.